Greetings! Ian from RTO here. Welcome to another week. Um, as it says on the, the site today that people should ease into the um, Monday because of a hectic weekend. Not on this channel, we get straight stuck in. No messing about. And today we have reached, I think it's part, I have to look, look at part six of the John Mitchell story. And the band we're looking at today is a band that I've actually seen. Unfortunately, John was not in the band, but the band in question are It Bites. Now, I saw It Bites in 1987. They supported Marillion on the Clutching at Straws um, tour. Now, I'd heard the album. I thought it was pretty good. But when they're played live, they're a lot heavier sound and a little bit more art rocky with a bit of bump live than they are in the studio but John joined them and they've become more of a really good new sort of neo prog band now they haven't made a bad album um, uh, I don't think they're, they're all listenable uh, I quite enjoy listening to them um, there's ones I prefer than others um, I just think they got better and better as time went on. So, they were formed in the early hours in Cumbria, in a little town called, as I think, I don't know how they pronounce it, but I think it's Ergamont in Cumbria, and Whitehaven, which is on the beautiful um, Cumbrian coast. They've had five albums, um, they made a few, split up, then come back. And uh, they've had one or two people in the band as well. So we'll have a look at the five albums of It Bites. That's some really good album covers as well, especially the one that comes in at number five. The debut album from 1986, The Big Lad in the Windmill. On here we have Francis Dunnery on guitars, lead vocals, John Beck on keyboards, backing vocals, Dick Nolan on the bass and backing vocals, and Bob Dalton drums and backing vocals. There's one thing about this band they all can sing. So the first track on this album is called I Got You Eating Out of My Hand. Okay, it's quite poppy. Uh, it's got that keyboard, 80s keyboard in it. But there are some elements of prog in this track. It's got some nice guitar work on this um, by Francis Dunnery. It's a really, it's it's not a brilliant track, but there's moments of prog in there. It's not too bad at all. All in, all in red. I love the harmonies in this. The vocal harmonies are fantastic. But it's that cheesy synth keyboard that sort of drags it into a dated time. Um, it's got a good riff though, the guitar riff's good, but it's the keyboards that sort of ruin it for me. Um, then we get a whole new world, too poppy, very Phil Collins <laughs> than Proggy. Uh, it's probably my least favorite track on the album. Screaming on the Beaches good track actually this has got lots of harmonies and this track actually sounds better live um, got good guitar rap track on it as well want to shout love the guitar riffs in this but it's that keyboard sound I'm not key you know I think you know my thoughts on some of them 80s keyboards <sighs> then we get turn me loose yeah, it's not too bad. Then we get Kai, Cold Tired and Hungry. It's got a really nice guitar solo on this. I don't mind this track. Forget the keyboards. Um, then we get Calling All the Heroes. I think everybody's heard of this one. Big hit for them. Uh, okay, that's got the cheesy keyboard sound, but when they play this live, it's a lot heavier. And it's a much better track live. Uh, I like the track, even with the cheesy keyboards. I think it's a catchy pop tune. 
Uh, then you'll get, you'll never go to heaven. A little bit mediocre, nothing special on that one, I'm afraid. And then we get this little ditty at the end called "The Big Lad in the Windmill." It's 47 seconds. It's a little short guitar piece. This is a really good album, though. Um, even though it does sound poppy um, but I, what I remember they played a lot of this album live and uh, uh, live this album is really good you know the songs are a lot more heavier and it's got a better sound you know the keyboard sounds not so smooth the drumming sounds more crisp um, so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 6 out of 10 and then coming at number 4 the second album now released in 1988 it's called Once Around the World it is Francis Dunnery again John Beck, Dick Nolan and Bob Dalton so oh, the first track here is called Midnight good track nice real strong guitar riff even the keyboard sounds good on this they've sort of dropped the sort of synthy eight, mid 80s and they've gone for a more subtle keyboard sound on this album it's not too bad kiss like judas very catchy keyboard room in this really is nice nice little swirls on the keyboard i don't mind that track at all um then we get yellow christian quite nice some great guitar work here from francis it's got a really nice solo in it good track rosemary this is really rocky and then it is ruined by the keyboard but uh, on the whole it's not too bad Black September, Black December sorry um, very 80 sound it sounding but it's got a really catty tune and the riff is really hooky really gets you hooked in then we get the the man and the angel I rather like this it may be a little bit poppy but it's catchy hunting the whale a bit wishy-washy for me it's, got, it's definitely got a bit of that horrible synthy sound in that really does ruin it Plastic Dream and now this has got some um, nice vocal harmonies on it it's very very pleasant then we get the title track which is a 14 minute epic called Once Around the World the best thing on the album very poppy prog neo prog the guitar work on this is absolutely brilliant from Francis. The keyboard, it's got a little more richer. Uh, it's got some proper keyboard swells, sort of thing you expect from Mark Kelly and Tony Banks. This is the sort of the first real proper proggy track that it bites really did. It's absolutely brilliant. My favourite track, of course. Um, it's still very poppy but it's going to more towards Prague it's not a bad album I don't mind listening to this one and I'll give this one an RTO ranking of 6.5 if you notice this is going up in the order so coming in at number three is the third album from 1989 it's called Eat Me in St. Louis and this um, was the final studio album of the original lineup? So it is, the, and that's the last album until 2006 as well. So it's Francis Dunnery, John Beck, Dick Nolan, and Bob Dalton. First track on this one is called A Positively Animal. The great little guitar riff here, some good drumming still got that sort of 1987 element to it but it, it's the guitars are really rocky i like that track actually it's not too bad underneath your pillow got some nice vocals on here some good power chords being thrown in as well pretty decent track then we got let us all go which in all honesty is not very good <laughs> it's probably one of the worst tracks they ever did um, I just don't get on with that one. 
still too young to remember some incredible guitar bits here from Francis uh, the keyboards a little bit as well but on the whole it's a reasonable track then we get murder on the of the planet earth probably the best track on the album uh, it's got a little bit of synthy on it which is okay but it's got some really strong guitar riffs people of America yeah it's alright solid track uh, it's listenable sister Sarah now this is it's bites trying to be the Beach Boys it's quite rocky the harmonies are really nice it's not too bad leaving without you a little bit limp a bit wishy-washy and then we get till the end of time I quite like this one it's got some good raunchy riffs on it even the keyboard sounds good on this excellent track the ice melts into water pretty good track a bit more proggy nice textures on this track nice arrangement then we get Charlie the last track they're trying to get away from that poppy sound there's some really good guitar work in this it's an instrumentally type thing it's really good I like that um, this album I think is really starting to go away from that pop sound and go more into the progressive sound I wonder if this is why the bands split up because certain elements didn't want to go down this way the guitar work from Francis is good and it's certainly the best album by this lineup of its bites so I shall give you an RTO ranking of 7 out of 10 ok coming at number 2 fourth album 2008 John Mitchell's now on board and um, joining him uh, uh, from the old band are uh, John Beck and Bob Dalton first track on here is called Oh My God God what a good track this is um, first time I heard this I went like, wow John's really um, had an influence and changed the direction of this band totally his vocals are really good it's a good, a good guitar solo it's a really strong track Ghosts the keyboards are definitely changed none of this synthy poppy nonsense has gone in come the sound of prog and neo prog some bright guitar riffs a very good vocal from John as well Playground I love this track the guitar is lovely the effects and the back the children laughing really gives that sort of atmosphere of a children's playground Memory of Water it starts off with that typical John Mitchell guitar playing then the keyboards come in um, from Jam, John Beck swirly keyboards really good track the wind that shakes the barley really good I love the middle section of this you've got piano and John's guitar working well some great drumming on this as well from Bob Dalton he's always been a good drummer but he's now really into his um, element here um, great disasters very Mike and the Mechanics it's very soft adult rock but it's a good track Fahrenheit another solid track love this one then we get uh, for safekeeping great guitar work from John as ever uh, fantastic modern prog wonderful track lights this is the more poppy sound still but it's still good it's got some lovely touches on this some nice keyboard on it then we get my favorite track on here it's it's an epic and it's called this is England wonderful track absolutely dynamite got some Hammond organ on here some great guitar work from John the vocals are good it's well put together fantastic track one of my favorite tracks by it bites then the last track is called when I fall very solid track after the bombastic this is England this is more gentle and subdued it's a really 
really good track. Yeah, first album with John. Um, you tell his influence and what an influence this guy has on when he comes into bands. He turned this band around from a sort of average pop band into a pretty good um, prog band. It's a solid album from top to bottom. Not a bad track on this one. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8 out of 10. So, number one is the fifth and most current album that was released in 2012. And it's called Map of the Past. Now, this is a concept album. It is written by singer guitarist John Mitchell and John Beck. The concept deals with the theme of the past as seen through old photographs. So we've got John Mitchell on lead vocals and guitars, John Beck on keyboards, Lee Pomeroy now, who's played with absolutely everybody, has joined them on the bass, and Bob Dalton is on the drums, backing goat vocals as ever. So the first track on here is Man in the Photograph. Oh, go love John Beck's keyboard. Is it really sets the tone of this album? Love it, absolutely love it. Lovely, gentle guitars and gentle vocals from John. Wallflower, brilliant track. This is a more heavy driving with rich keyboards, very similar to the arena sound. Excellent. Then we get the title track, Map of the Past. Another really good track some deep swirly keyboard runs the bass line from Lee is brilliant what a great pl bass player Lee is and a great guitar solo from John Mitchell absolutely great track clocks superb I like when you got this old fairground organ coming into it some great guitar work again love that track let me get flag probably one of the best guitar solos on here you sort of got the keyboard and it sort of complements John's guitar playing very very strong track then we get my favorite track on here it's called the big machine starts off really really gentle like all good prog songs it's so atmospheric it's got my favorite keyboard uh, solo it's very Clive Nolan style John Beck must have had some lessons from or something but it's absolutely amazing it's definitely the best thing on this album and then we get the cartoon graveyard I love the musical box at the beginning of this I love tracks like that and it's a very very gentle vocal from John and then it just builds up some lovely harmony singing terrific sat track then we get send no flowers church organ starts this off absolutely brilliant it just built up into this crescendo it's old style prog done in a modern way absolutely brilliant meadow and stream the keyboards on this album is, is probably some of um john beck's best keyboard work he's done in the band absolutely brilliant then you get these lovely great riffs from john the Last Escape, very Pink Floyd in places, but it doesn't matter because it's great. The solo from John is brilliant. And then there's the Exit song, and it's an acoustic big that's sort of after the great escape, Last Escape. Powerful, strong riffs. You've got this little gentle two minute song with some acoustic guitar, and it's a really nice way to bring it that, back down to end the album. I find this album is absolutely brilliant. It's of being a concept album, you have to play it from start to finish. Um, it's amazing how they've come from a poppy band to a full-on prog band. I think that is John Mitchell. Um, absolutely brilliant album. If you've never heard this, go and listen to it. It is absolutely superb. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of nine out of. 10. So there we are, a band that went from a pop, 80s pop band to a 21st century prog band. Absolutely brilliant band. 
I've always liked them, but they've just got better and better and better. I don't know if we'll get any more from them, but if that was to be the last one, what a way to go out. So next week it is part number seven. And we've reached one of the my favourite band, bands John Mitchell's involved in outside of Arena. The brilliant Lonely Robot. Absolutely brilliant band. Everyone seems to have jumped on board with that one. Everyone that's everyone in Prague and Neo Prague has had a had a part to play in Lonely Robot's career. Okay, um, I'll be back very shortly. Or in your case, hopefully you'll think, oh, I'll go and watch the other one now. And it's a classic album. And this week we're going to look at a Billy Joel album, one of my favourite Billy Joel alb albums. And it is, of course, Street Life Serenade. So join me for that. So bye for now. <laughs>